the groups feature I feel is a very underused feature in most digital audio workstations. And you might think that it can do the same thing as buses or even folders in some digital audio workstations. Now, some of the things are going to be similar, but there are things that you can do with groups that you can't do with buses, and it really helps you when you're doing your mixing. So let's look at how to create groups and why you might want to use them with Luna. Ideally, at this stage, you have all of your tracks kind of organized together. If you don't, you might want to go ahead and do that right now. Although it isn't necessary, I do find it easier if you have your tracks all lined up in a group. So I'm going to start with my drums group because it's got the most parts to it. So I'm just going to click on the first one here, then scroll down to the last one that I want in this group, hold down shift on my computer keyboard, and then I'm going to click on that and it selects all of the tracks in between. And I want all of these in this first group. So what I could do now is very easily hold down control and press G and that creates a group, or you could right click on any of these tracks that you have selected and you'll see a create groups in there. So you can see create group, but control G is very easy. So now we can name the group and I'm going to call this just simply drums. And you can see there's some settings in here, mixing, editing, inserts, sends, and I'm actually just going to leave it at mixing and editing for now, but you can use these other things if you want. If you put inserts, that means if you change the insert on one, it changes it for them all. And if you choose to add a send, if you add a send to one, that's going to do the same send for all of them. And that's not what I want to do. I just want mixing and editing. And you can also see down here, all of the tracks that are in this group. So you can make sure you have all of the ones you want in there. If not, you can add them in later. So let's click okay. And now you can see we have our group over here, which is drums. And we can turn groups on and off with this here, or you can just turn off one group. If you have a bunch and you just want one off, we can just click on that. And you can see now it's white or gray. That means that group is turned off but we'll click on it and enable it. Another thing you might want to do with groups is make it so you can't see any of the tracks in that group. So we could click on this little dot to the side here and that just hid all of the tracks that were in that group. So that's useful if you want to focus on maybe your guitars or vocals or everything except for those tracks. And you can do that with all of your groups and then you can just have them reappear by clicking on that dot again. So that's just some very quick basics of groups. Now let's look at how they could come in handy when mixing and some things you can do with them. So I'm going to open the mix window here and you can see all my drums here that are in that group. And if I press solo on any of these drums, it's going to solo all of them. And the same thing if I press mute, it's going to do that. And another thing you'll notice if I change the level on one, it changes the level on all of them and the same thing with panning, but because I'm controlling a mono one, it's only doing it for the mono. If I go over to the stereo ones, it's going to change all the stereo ones the same. Now, what if I wanted to just adjust the level of my kick drum and nothing else in this group? Well, I could turn the group off and then go back here and I can easily do that. Or if I don't want to click over there, I can just hold down control on my computer keyboard and then I can click and drag just that one thing. And that's the same for anything else in here. If I just wanted to solo the kick only, hold down control and then I can click on solo for the kick. And if I wanted to add other things into the solo from this group, but not the whole group, I could just hold down control and solo other parts of it. If I don't do that and I click on any of these, it's going to solo all of them. Now, another useful way that we can use groups during mixing or editing is we'll just go back to the timeline view here. And let's say I want to do some automation. So if I go to view and I click on that, then click on volume, you can see it's changed it to volume view for all of the tracks in that group. And if I do any automation in here, so I'll just click and drag a section here, and then I'll automate that one section. You can see it's automated all of the drums 
in our group here. And I find that very useful if I want to do guitar groups or vocal groups, or sometimes what I do is duplicate my bass and I can easily automate both tracks at the same time. And that's not just for volume automation. You can do that with any automation in here. However, if you wanted to do some more finer automation on just one of these tracks, you could hold down control on your computer keyboard and we can just do something like this. And you'll notice that it's only automated this one track and not all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and create some more groups in here. So we'll just do my bases and right click, then create group. And we'll call this bass, click OK. And I'll do that for my rhythm guitars, right click, create group, guitars. I always leave my lead guitars out of that. And I only have one lead vocal in here, but I do have a couple of backing vocals. So I'll make a group out of those. So now we can see all of our groups over here and you can turn any of them on or off just by clicking on them again. And like I showed you earlier, if we just wanted to see maybe our bases only, we can just start turning off all of those other tracks. And now all we see is the bases, but we still have these other tracks visible to us because they weren't part of a group. So we could go up to our track list here and click on them in there. And now all we see is bases. And if we go to our timeline view, all you see is your bases. So that can help you when you really want to focus on things, but I'm going to enable these again. All right, I'm going to show you another useful thing with groups. And that's when we start to route things to buses. So I want to route all the outputs from our drums to this drum bus that I just created. And right now you can see it's set to main. So if I just click on main here, you can see it says main, but I want it to drum bus. So I'll click on that. And now let's put the output of all of our drums to our drum bus. So let's just solo this here. And you can see all of our drums are outputting to the drum bus now. And that just makes things so much quicker when you're doing a lot of buses. And I do set up a lot of buses. We'll look at that in the next video, actually. But I want to show you another benefit of using groups instead of buses for your solos and muting. So let's have a look at that. So right now I have this reverb bus that I very quickly set up for our snare drum. And it's just for this example to show you. And I'm going to just solo the snare so you can hear the reverb there. And if I mute that reverb bus, so there's no reverb on there, but let's say I like this reverb and I want to hear it on there. And if I just solo the drum bus here, which is going to allow me to hear all of the drums that are outputting to the drum bus, I'm not hearing that reverb. I would then have to go and solo the reverb as well. And now I hear the reverb, but if I solo this entire group and not solo the drum bus, I can hear that reverb bus and I don't have to solo the bus. Usually by the end of my mix, I have a bunch of reverb set up. So this really helps when I just want to hear what the drums sound like with my reverbs or what my guitars sound like with the reverbs. And there's various reverbs or other bus effects that I might have on there. So this is a huge benefit using groups as opposed to your buses to control your solo and mutes. And if you want to check out how to create these buses, click the video right here, because that's the next step in keeping things organized for my mix. If you liked this video that you just watched, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching for Audio Tech TV. I'm Zane. Keep creating. Fist bump. Thumbs up.